Welcome back. So we now have all the machinery we need to look at the linear algebraic solution for solving simultaneous linear equations. So let me start by reminding you where we left off. We have the system of linear equations 2x minus y is equal to 1 and x plus y is equal to 5. We've rewritten that in matrix vector notation. So this is a vector of unknowns. That's what I'm trying to solve for. This, of course, is the left-hand side of the linear system. This is the right-hand side of the linear system. And this matrix vector multiplication embodies the linear system. In particular, remember that when you have, here I have a 2 by 2 matrix, a 2 by 1. So 2 by 2, 2 by 1, the result must be 2 by 1. Those inner dimensions must, must match and then the number of rows and the number of columns for the left and the right dictate the size of the output. So it's this row times this column is that element. This row times this column is equal to that element. So 2x minus y is equal to 1, x plus y is equal to 5. That is a linear system of equations because I'm, all I'm doing is adding and subtracting these two unknowns and multiplying them by known scalar values. So you can see very clearly here in this matrix formulation that as long as this is all known, and this is all known, it's a linear system. Now, where we left off was formulating the problem like this, but we haven't solved it, and of course that's what we are going to do now. So, how are we going to solve this? Well, what we'd like to do, we need to solve for x and y, so we have to get rid of that matrix. I mean, let's think about this in sort of a standard algebraic framework. If I've got 2x is equal to 1, I divide both sides by 2, and I've got my solution for x. Well, here I don't have something quite that simple. I have a whole matrix times a vector of unknowns is equal to a vector. But conceptually, this is what I want to do. I want to isolate this vector here and bring this, get rid of this thing over here, and have some quantity over here that I can calculate. Okay? So imagine, so let me just remind you, first of all, that, again, this is a 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 1 vector, so that makes it a 2 by 1 vector. This is a 2 by 1 vector. So if I can multiply both sides of these by a 2 by 2 matrix, which I'm allowed to do because this is a 2 by 1 vector, this is a 2 by 1 vector, then I'll have a 2 by 1 vector here um, and a 2 by 1 vector over here. Now, if I can multiply both sides by the same matrix, that's certainly allowed. I'm certainly allowed, since this is an equality, Whatever I do on the left-hand side, I do in the right-hand side. Add something, add something. Multiply something, multiply something. The same thing holds true. The same thing holds true with matrix multiplication. If I multiply by a matrix here, I can multiply by a matrix here, and the equality holds. Well, what if that matrix is a special matrix and it has the property that when I multiply it by this matrix that I know, of course, it gives me the so-called identity matrix. Well, what is the identity matrix? It is 1 on the diagonal and 0 on the off-diagonal. Why is this a special matrix? Well, let's multiply this matrix times that vector and see what we get. Row, column. So 1 times x plus 0 times y, that's x. Row, column. 0 times x plus 1 times y is y. So this matrix times xy is xy. So what have I done? I've isolated x, y here, and on the right-hand side, I have some matrix times a vector. And obviously, I have to know what that is, and then I can simply do that matrix multiplication, and I have my solution for x and y. So here's the idea. We set up a linear system of equations. Um, we have not isolated our knowns, but if I can find a matrix that annihilates that matrix by turning it into the identity, by the way, one way to think about this is if this was a simple linear uh, algebraic equation, 2x equals 4, if I divide by 2 on the left-hand side, I've isolated x. It's sort of like that. Obviously, it's not a division, but it's, it's, a, it's a matrix multiplication. But I'm going to find something that annihilates this by turning it into the identity matrix, and then I will have isolated my unknowns, and then I have an expression, which, of course, is the solution to the linear system. So how do we do that? Well, this thing, of course, is a matrix inverse. And it's a matrix inverse because it's a matrix inverse, of course, of this matrix right here, 2, minus 1, 1, 1. And it has the property that when you multiply it by this, you get the identity. Similar to the inverse of 2 is 1 over 2, because when I multiply those two, I get 1. 
This is the linear algebraic or the matrix equivalent of that identity. And again, it's the identity because when I multiply by that vector, I just get the vector. It's a no-op. All right, so we have to figure out how to get that matrix inverse. So let's figure out how to do that, and then we should be pretty close to home. So imagine I have a matrix, EFGH, and I'm looking for another. So this was the 2, minus 1, 1, 1, for example. And I'm looking for a matrix such that when I multiply these two matrices, again, let's remind ourselves how to multiply. This row times this column, this row times this column, this row times this column, this row times this column gives me 1, 0, 0, 1. Should be the identity. So that is when I, I, I have this matrix, I'm looking for this matrix such that when I left multiply it, I get the identity matrix. Okay, that's my job. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, well, how do we do that? Well, let's, 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 let's play through that matrix multiplication again. So, A times E plus B times G should equal to 1. Remember, by the way, I know this matrix. I know EFGH. Those are values that are given to me. And my job is to figure out A, B, C, D. What is the matrix inverse such that when I multiply them, I get that matrix right there. So let's just walk through the, the matrix multiplication and see what we have. So AE plus BG should be equal to 1. C times E plus D times G should be equal to 0. So go down the row with the first column. Now go back up to the first row, next column. A times F plus B times H should be equal to 0. And last one, C times F plus D times H should be equal to 1. So look at these four equations that I've just established by just simply doing the matrix multiplication. So the again, E, F, G, H, and of course these values are all known, right? That's the matrix I'm trying to inverse. I give you a bunch of values. A, B, C, D are the unknowns. These are the unknowns. So look at what we have here. All of the unknowns are being added to each other, and they're only being scalar multiplied by known values. That looks like a lot like a linear system, yeah? Um, so I have four constraints, one, two, three, four, in four unknowns, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. That's a system of linear equations, and there's this sort of perverse recursion here almost that we are setting out to figure out how to solve a matrix inverse to solve a linear system, and to do that, I have to solve a linear system with four constraints and for unknowns. I'm not going to walk through how to solve that for you. I'm just going to give you the matrix inverse, um, but it's actually relatively straightforward to do. The matrix inverse, once you solve those four linear constraints and four unknowns, is the following. So if I give you the matrix EFGH, the inverse, that is ABCD, is equal to, and I denote that by the way, is M with an inverse in the superscript, as 1 over EH minus FG, this is called the determinant. Very, very important. We'll talk some more about this in a little bit. So it's 1 over the determinant, which is this di the product of the diagonal minus the product of the off-diagonal. That's just a scalar value, just a number. And then I take this matrix, and what I do is I reverse the diagonal. So the H comes up, the E goes down, and then I negate the off-diagonal. And I'm going to show you that this is actually the matrix inverse in a little bit. But this is the matrix inverse for a 2 by 2 matrix. Matrix inverse for a 3 by 3 is a little bit different. 4 by 4 is a little bit different, and so on and so forth. We'll stick with the 2 by 2 for now. We'll talk about the larger uh, matrices in a little bit. All right, so first of all, let's convince ourselves that this is the matrix, that this matrix times this matrix is the identity matrix. All right, so here we go. E, so this row times this column. So that's E, H minus F, G. And then I'm going to multiply that by the scalar. Remember, a scalar times a matrix is just the scalar times every element of the matrix. So if I have EH minus FG times this, that's equal to 1. Good. So uh, let's do this one here. I'll go across the top now. So this row is uh, E times minus F uh, plus e time, F times E or E times F, which of course is just 0. So I get that. Uh, GH times H minus G. So that's G H uh, minus G H G, which of course is zero. And the last one is G times minus F plus H times E, which of course is just that, the determinant. And so when I divide that by the determinant, I get a one. So you can see 
You can prove to yourself, I didn't actually derive this for you, but you can prove to yourself that this in fact is the matrix inverse because when I left multiply it by that, I get the identity matrix. Again, this EH minus FG, which is the product of the diagonal minus the product of the off diagonal for a two by two matrix, is called the determinant, where the inverse is being multiplied by one over the determinant. This determinant is going to be really important in a number of places down the road. So we'll come back to this in the next segment. Um, and it tells us a lot about the matrix and it tells us about the linear system that we are trying to solve as well. But we'll, we'll loop back to that in a little bit. Uh, notice, by the way, that not only for, for this 2x2 two two matrix example, that M inverse M is equal to the identity, but also M, M inverse. So if I take this matrix and I right multiply it, I will also get the identity. And just to practice matrix multiplication, let's go ahead and do that. So this is now on the left-hand side. So we take this row times this column. So that's E, H minus F. G, that's of course just the, the determinant, so when we multiply it by the reciprocal of the determinant, we get a 1. Move over. Uh, F, H minus F, H is equal to 0, of course, and this had better be 0, so it's E times minus G plus E times G, and that of course is equal to 0, and one more. We have uh, uh, minus G times F plus H times E, which of course is just the determinant. I've just reversed the terms. So when I multiply by the reciprocal, I get a 1. So you can show that that matrix inverse um, is both a right inverse and a left inverse. Okay, now why is that matrix inverse important? Well, because the way we set up to solve linear systems is we went from the simple linear systems. We wrote it as a, a, a vector sum, scaled this vector by this vector. We then bundled all that up into a matrix times a vector is equal to a vector. I want to isolate that vector of unknown, so if I left multiply by the inverse, I isolate it, and then I have an expression for my solution. So as long as we can invert a matrix, we're home. We actually know now how to solve linear systems. Okay, there's a little bit more I want to do. So that's the, that's the linear algebraic picture. Okay? Now, there's a couple more things. You remember I promised you that there's, there's sort of three possibilities we have to worry about or we should think about when we're solving linear systems. Is the solution unique? If it's not unique, does it exist? If, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't exist, are there an infinite number of solutions or no solutions at all? And I'm going to show you next that that determinant tells us everything we want to know about the uh, uniqueness and existence of solutions. So when we come back, we'll examine a little bit more what that matrix inverse really means, what the determinant means, and how that can help us infer um, what the nature of the solutions are of our linear system. And then we'll start applying the linear system through a series of examples. All right, we'll pick it up in a few minutes when we come back.